Hi everyone, welcome back to the Cosplay Madness that is my channel. Today I'm so, so excited to tell you all about how I made the jacket for my Viktor Nikiforov cosplay. I'm so proud of this thing and how it turned out, and I'm also super proud of my Yuri who did a fabulous job with her jacket too. So this tutorial is multi-purpose. You can use it for Victor and Yuri, just change the color. This is going to be a long and super in-depth tutorial, so I'm dividing it up into sections so you can skip around as needed. The time code for each section will be in the description. So with that, let's get started! First, let's talk about the pattern. We started with this McCall's M7332 pattern and used the B pattern as a base. Now you have to modify the pattern a little to include a seam down the back and a yoke. I'm going to take zero credit for this because Alex did 100% of the pattern altering because she's a boss. So the new pattern has a front, back, yoke, and sleeve. You cut two of each pattern piece and everything has 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. The curve on the bottom of the yoke matches up with the curve on the top of the back piece. And this is where Alex added length for the coattails. The front part of the pattern is folded up slightly on an angle. On the back of the pattern piece, the coattails are 8 inches long. So now that the pattern has been explained a little, we'll move on. So here is our pattern in action. I purchased three and a half yards of light pink polyester chiffon. You don't technically need this much, but I had to cut out my pattern three different times because I messed up quite a bit. Chiffon is really tricky to work with, but it's the best fabric we could find, so we dealt with it. So fold your fabric in half, pin your pattern pieces to your fabric, and then cut them out. I have a separate video showing you how I hand dyed the pattern pieces that I will link right here, but the gist of it is I dyed one sleeve and both back pieces dark pink and gradient dyed the two front pieces. Because of the two different fabric colors, you will need light pink and dark pink thread. <laughs> So we'll start with hemming the coattails. Measure up 8 inches and mark it with a pin. Then do a quarter inch double turn hem up those 8 inches. Press it down with your iron. Before I sewed anything, I played around with the settings on my machine and did some practice stitches. Chiffon is so, 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 so fussy, so I went really slow and practiced on scraps before I started sewing. Using a straight stitch and my darker thread, I sewed down the coattail hem. I used two lines of stitches because I think it gives it a really nice finished look. Next, I sewed the two back pieces together using a 5 8 inch seam allowance. This should be obvious, but make sure you don't sew your nice coattails together. Next, I took the back piece to the iron and pressed the seam flat. Chiffon frays like crazy, so to get rid of the raw edge, I took the fabric, folded it underneath itself, pressed it down, and then just sewed along the edge. Next, I worked on the yoke. Taking both of the yoke pieces, I basted them together with a light pink thread. Basting is just when you use a really long and loose stitch that you are going to remove later. Next, I pinned the yoke to the back, took the yoke piece, and flipped it upside down on the back pattern piece and made sure the three corner pieces matched up. If it takes you a few tries to get it even, that's okay, me too. Just make sure to use a lot of pins because this fabric is the worst and tends to slip around. Then I sewed it down again using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. After I stitched it down, I took a seam ripper and removed all of the basting stitches. They should come out really easily since they're so loose. Then I took the part where it dips down in the middle and cut some notches to reduce bulk in the next seam I sewed. I finished the raw edge of the yoke seam in the same way I did the seam down the back, but instead of folding the fabric on either side of the seam down, I took it all and folded it up onto the yoke side of the seam. I did this because the yoke has two layers, so you won't be able to see it as much. Press the folds and sew it down. I again used two sets of stitches because I like the way it looks. Then I worked on sewing the rest of my jacket together using French seams. A French seam is going to hide all of the raw edges of your fabric, and they're pretty easy. So starting with the shoulder seam, I laid the fabric wrong sides together. Usually you lay fabric right sides together, but not for a French seam. So, wrong sides together, I sewed my fabric at 3 eighths of an inch using a straight stitch. When the fabric was sewn together, I cut off all of the excess fabric left over at the seam using my rotary cutter. I cut as close to the stitches as possible. Next, I took my fabric and flipped it around so the raw seam is now on the outside of the jacket and then I pinned down the fabric. Once the fabric was pinned, I pressed it and stitched it down using a 1 quarter inch seam allowance. 3 eighths plus 1 fourth equals 5 eighths, so we still have the same 5 eighths inch seam allowance in the garment. And now you can't see the raw edges at all. French seams are great for fabrics that fray a lot, like chiffon, so I did that again on the other shoulder seam and I also used it down the side seams. So to reiterate, 
Pin the fabric wrong sides together, sew it at 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, trim the excess fabric from the seams, flip the fabric so it's right sides together, pin the seam together, and then sew it at 1 quarter inch seam allowance. You'll get the hang of it really quickly if you decide to do this project. Then I sewed on the sleeve also using French seams. This is a little harder since it's on a curve, but it is doable. I started with the light sleeve and it's easy to remember which side it goes on because it's light on the right. So the jacket body was right side out and the sleeve was inside out because remember that for a French seam it begins with wrong sides together. It took me several tries to get the sleeves pinned on properly and I even basted in a few stitches to mark where some of the points would match up which was super helpful. After it was pinned, I followed the exact same steps I did on the shoulder and side seams. The sleeves were super tricky and I had to unpick one of them, which was a pain, but they're attached and that's all that matters. To finish off the sewing for the base of the jacket, I hemmed the whole thing using a quarter inch double turn seam allowance. The most difficult parts to hem were the neckline and the corners, so if you're doing this project, take your time and use the appropriate thread color for whatever part of the jacket you're sewing. I altered the length of the sleeve because Victor has sleeves that go a little past his elbow, so I tried on the jacket and marked on the dark sleeve where I wanted to cut the sleeve with a pin. I took the jacket off and used my rotary cutter to shorten the sleeve. I laid down the lighter sleeve and lined up the cut off part of the dark sleeve so the sleeves would be the same length. Then I tried it on again to make sure I liked the length. Now I get to decorate the jacket, yay! So I'm starting with the sleeve cuffs. My sleeve is about 5 inches wide so I cut out two rectangles that were 10 and a quarter inches long and 6 inches wide. I folded the rectangles lengthwise and sewed them down using a zigzag stitch and then I folded them again and stitched them down to make a loop. Then I placed the sleeve inside of the rectangle putting the right sides together and Alex helped stretch the spandex while I pinned it down. I sewed it down by stretching it around the actual sewing machine and used a zigzag stitch and ta-da! Repeat on other sleeve. Next are the black lapel pieces. Alex also made this pattern, so yeah, thanks Alex for carrying this entire project, I love you. Some people do the lapel piece in one part, but we liked it as two. The reference pictures aren't consistent, so do what you think looks best. I pinned the pieces to the same Yaya Han black spandex I used for my gloves and cut out two of each piece using my rotary cutter. This fabric won't fray, so I don't need to worry about hemming it. So I just put my jacket on a dress form and pinned the two bigger lapel pieces on the fabric. You can also pin these down flat, but it's a little easier on the dress form because the fabric is draping the way that you are going to wear it. They are pinned 7 inches down from the shoulder seams. Then I sewed all the way around the applique very close to the edge using a straight stitch. Once I was done sewing, I trimmed off any excess fabric that was hanging off of the bottom. Then I worked on the two teardrop shaped pieces at the top of the lapel. It took me a while to get them even, but several pins later I did it. And then your lapel applique is sewn on. Then I marked the placement of the buttons on the jacket. From the point of where the two lapel pieces meet, the buttons are 3, 7, and 10 inches down. Victor's buttons aren't evenly spaced. Next, I sewed on the buttons. These are 25 millimeter buttons I got off Amazon and I will link them in the description. For a project with this many buttons, find them on Etsy or Amazon because it will be way cheaper than going to the craft store for them and you can find some really unique buttons. Next, I made these things that go on the shoulder seams and they're actually called shoulder cords. Well, I made one of them, Alex made the other one, thank you Alex. And it's just a piece of flat trim that is woven into a single strand braid. I will link the tutorial we used in the description also, because they do a way better job explaining it than I ever could. I just used hot glue to tuck the extra length underneath. After they were glued, I hand stitched them to the shoulder seams. Next, I'm going to add four buttons on either side of the shoulder cord to the side with the dark sleeve. To help keep the placement even, I marked where they were going to go with some stickers. After I had all the buttons sewed on, I draped some silvery rope trim across my front to figure out how long the cords needed to be. Want to know a fun fact? These are my graduation cords for being an honor student, so do well in school, kids. You never know what's going to come in handy for cosplay. The top and middle cord are going to be the same length, while the bottom cord will be slightly longer. To cut the rope apart, I wrapped it up in tape and then cut the tape in the middle. You have to finish the ends of the rope or else it will fray, so we made our own aglets. I will also link a tutorial for this, but here's how I did it. 
I took a length of black thread and pushed it through the woven strands of the rope and tied a knot. Then I put some E6000 glue down onto some paper and rolled the edge of the rope in it. Then I took some silver thread and wrapped it really tightly a bunch of times around the rope. The silver thread tends to tangle easily, so I put it on a sewing machine to prevent that. Once it's wrapped around, trim the thread and roll it in more E6000, and then repeat it for the other cord edges. To attach the cords to the buttons, I just took the length of black thread hanging off the edge of the rope and knotted it around the button. It held up fine for the most part, but there's definitely a better way to do this. Then I tried it on to make sure the cords fit around me, and then I moved on to making the draped cords for the shoulder. I clipped the end of the cord to one of the buttons and then just draped it until I was happy with the length. The two buttons closest to the sleeve seam share a cord, and the two sleeves closest to the neckline share a cord. The pieces turned out to be 18 and 12 inches long. I repeated the same covering with tape and making an aglet for those pieces as well. I also attached them to the buttons the same way as the cords in the front, so I just took the ends of the thread and tied them around the buttons. Then I made these weird little flap things for the cuffs, I have no idea what they're called. I didn't even make a pattern for these, I just cut out the shape on the matte spandex with my rotary cutter. I folded the fabric in such a way that I would get four identical pieces. Then I sewed them right sides together. I put a paper towel underneath the fabric just to give it some structure and because sewing machines sometimes eat spandex. After it was done being sewn, I trimmed the excess fabric from the points, flipped it right side out, and top stitched it down. Then I pinned the piece underneath the sleeve and stitched it down using a straight stitch. Then I flipped it upwards so the top of it was on the chiffon and then added a button and tacked it in place. So this is what the jacket looks like before I covered it in rhinestones. It's not bad, but it definitely needs glitter. I mean, this is Victor we're talking about. Come on! So to bedazzle my jacket, I used three different colors of Swarovski flatback crystals. I used a fuchsia, a light rose color, and my favorite were these pretty holographic ones called Aurora Borealis. Oh my gosh, they're so sparkly. These all came from Swarovski shop on Etsy and they are the 7SS size. They will be linked down below. I purchased 1,944 crystals for the jacket in total. To glue down the rhinestones, I used a syringe with a small opening and a Lean's Julet glue. The glue worked great! None of the rhinestones on the chiffon came off. I just squeezed some of the glue into the syringe and used the little dots of it to place my rhinestones. To pick up the rhinestones, I actually used a regular old birthday candle. You can get a real tool for this called Jewel Setter, which is basically just a stick with some wax on the end, but a birthday candle does the same thing and you probably already have one hanging around your house. So, I mean, why pay for things when you don't have to pay for things, right? So I picked up the jewels with the candle and set them onto the glue dots. I started with the yoke of my jacket and used the light rose and aurora borealis crystals. As you can see, I put these in pretty sparse to start, just to make sure I didn't run out of crystals. And I laid down some plastic wrap so I didn't glue any of the fabric layers together while I was bedazzling. Victor has a little symbol on his sleeve cuff flap thing. So Alex drew it out on some paper, because I can't shape, and then I traced the shape onto the flaps with a sharpie. I decided to make the shape out of my rhinestones. I laid down a line of glue and used my dark fuchsia crystals to make the outline of the shape. I am going to actually have to paint this symbol on because the crystals peeled off this fabric. They stick to this chiffon because it's porous, but not onto this matte spandex, unfortunately. So here is what the jacket looks like bedazzled. I filled in the yoke a lot more with the pink and holographic crystals and I covered the entire entire light pink sleeve, even underneath, and then I used the light pink crystals at the top and then faded them into the fuchsia crystals to match the gradient. Then I added a few of the fuchsia crystals on the dark pink sleeve. So I'm super happy with the sparkle, but again, I think I could add even a little more rhinestones to it. And that's it! That's everything I did for my Victor jacket!
are making this cosplay, good luck to you. I hope this was helpful. If you want to see some of the progress pictures for this, you can check out my Instagram or my Facebook page, and you can also follow me on Twitter, Tumblr, and Snapchat. All of those are linked down below. Also, totally check out Vanilla Guard on Instagram and Twitter and YouTube. She is great, and she posts some super helpful photo tutorials. If you like cosplay tutorials, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Good luck on all your cosplay adventures, and I'll see you next time. Bye!